Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fulton Montgomery Community College's uh, admissions chat with a professor series. My name is Dan Fogarty, um, and I am one of the admissions counselors here at Fulton Montgomery Community College. And we have an amazing event planned for you today. So first, we'd like to welcome all of the students sitting within our Zoom chat here. Uh, we also would like to welcome uh, all of our uh, people listening through our Facebook Live uh, chat, and we'll try and answer any of the questions that we can uh, for each and every one of you uh, as well. Uh, so we have a, a great event today. Uh, during the month of May and into the beginning of June, uh, you're going to hear from many of our professors throughout various disciplines so that you can get more of the information uh, that you would like to know as students uh, and a lot of the hot button issues that you might not already know, like the jobs you can receive uh, with the degree, the transferability, uh, maybe the salary uh, is quite important. And if you're interested in business, well, <laughs> salary is probably important to you because you're already thinking money of some uh, form or fashion. So let me introduce the uh, four professors that will be helping us out today. Uh, we will have Alex Henderson, Mark Swain, uh, Larry Zuckerman, and Charlene Dibus. We'll all be able to get you all the information that you need to know uh, for our uh, business programs here on our campus. So uh, let's get down to business, shall we? <laughs> so let's uh, start right off. Alex Henderson's going to jump on into the chat, and she is going to get you squared away uh, with everything as far as what business programs we have. Hi, Alex. Hi, Dan. Thanks so much. And welcome to everybody who is with us today or seeing this in the in the future. Uh, I am here with my colleagues in the business division, and I'm going to tell you um, a little bit about FM and our business program. Um, first, know that the four of us here uh, have decades of experience in business. Um, we also have decades of experience in teaching combined. And we have decades of experience of teaching online. So we've been offering our online business programs for um, nearly 20 years at the college. And so we are, um, we've developed some really good courses, both in the classroom and online. We have um, four main business programs. One is called Business Administration, and that's designed for transfer. So if you're here, if you're coming to FM and then you wanna move on to a four-year school, which by the way, is a great business decision. Uh, it saves you a lot of money on your first two years and you get an excellent education with us and, the, and our other colleagues at FM. And um, so we have that program. And then we have a program for accounting, one for marketing and one for management. And those three programs are called uh, Associates of Applied Science. And they're designed specifically that when you complete them that you would go into the workforce. They're not necessarily designed that you have to go into the workforce, you can still transfer, but it's, uh, they're, they, they're very skill-based and, and they lead to great job opportunities. Um, so all of those programs are taught and then um, Mrs. Dibus in a few moments is going to tell you about a couple other really exciting programs that we have as well. Um, students do uh, transfer from seamlessly uh, to SUNY schools. We are part of the SUNY PATH program where all our classes um, are designed, our programs are designed to allow students whether it be the University of Albany or SUNY Plattsburgh or anything in between across the state, our courses transfer well to those schools. We've worked really hard to make sure of that. On the private side, those are schools like Siena, St. Rose, uh, Sage. Our students transfer to those schools as well um, and we have good relationships. In our non-transfer programs, we have internships, um, that are uh, great for students. Those internships often lead to jo good job opportunities. And it's a way to get some experience in addition to, um, in, in addition to having your degree, because that's what employers like. They like to see both experience and education. We also, which I think my colleagues will also be talking a little bit more about, um, the variety of different ways that you can take your classes. Um, 
And, and also the other thing that I think is important to note about, about all of us um, is we all come with a lot of different experiences. I was a returning adult student. Some of my colleagues went at the traditional age um, from straight out of high school into college. We've, uh, many of us have taken classes online. We've obviously all taken a lot of classes in the classroom. Um, and so we are very able to, to assist you. I'm also an academic advisor, so I can help you guide your path. Um, and I can help you transition um, if you've been out of school for a while, or even if you're right out of high school, um, either one, I've actually done it all. I, I took classes out of high school, then I took some time off, then I went back. Um, so I can help in all of those areas and help and help you be successful. So um, you can you can certainly transition um, to whether you're in high school or a returning adult student. Um, we we have the skills and the techniques and the courses and the offerings to to help you. And so um, next, I'm going to turn it over to our uh, fine Professor Zuckerman, who is gonna talk a little bit about our accounting programs, I think. Right, Mr. Zuckerman? Right, Professor Henderson. Thank you very much for your usual uh, excellent introduction. So I'm Lawrence Zuckerman. I'm a certified public accountant. I have a master's in taxation. And beginning this September, 2020, I'll be starting with uh, FMCC for my 15th year. Prior to coming to uh, Fulton Montgomery Community College, I also taught at Queens College City University of New York and at SUNY Stony Brook, both four-year colleges, and I taught at SUNY uh, Suffolk County Community College. Uh, one of the points that I think is important to make not only about me, but about all of our colleagues is we're all not only experienced teachers in both the physical classroom and the online environment, but as Professor Henderson said, we come from a range of industry backgrounds. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, the accounting program. I mentioned to you that I am a CPA. The CPA is a license that you can get from New York State or any of the other states in the country that allow you to do certain types of accounting tasks that non-licensed people are not allowed to do by law. And over the 14 years that I've completed now at FMCC, we've had a number of people that have gone through our accounting program and have become certified public accountants. Uh, to become a CPA really need a couple of different things. You need to fulfill an educational requirement, which today in virtually all of the states, including New York, is called the 150 hour requirement. What that means in plain English for most people is a master's degree, typically in either accounting or taxation. Uh, you have to pass the uniform CPA exam, which is a four part exam, a very difficult exam. It's a licensing exam. It's the same exam that's given in all of the different states. And then there's typically an experience requirement. In New York, you need to fulfill your five year educational requirement, pass the CPA exam, and then work for one year under a license, under a licensed CPA. It's kind of like an apprenticeship. So our program is designed for people that want to enter the accounting workforce right away. And we also have a number of people that transfer on to go and get their more advanced uh, accounting certifications like the CPA. For many students at the community college level, what's really good about our program is we have a course called Computerized Accounting Principles, where you'll learn a software program called QuickBooks. You may have heard of that. And in addition to learning QuickBooks, we actually have an external certification called the Certified QuickBooks User that makes you very employable if you decide to leave FM and go into the workforce rather than going on to uh, some of the schools where a lot of our graduates go to study accounting, which include SUNY Albany, Siena, Sage, SUNY Plattsburgh, and other places. So the QuickBooks uh, uh, program that we have makes you very employable. And the third thing that I'll point out is we have an exciting investments curriculum here within our business program. Uh, we offer two different courses. One is called personal financial planning, um, and the other is called uh, fundamentals of investments and personal finance, I should say, rather than personal financial planning. BUS 162 personal finance, BUS 262 fundamentals of investments. And these are really popular courses. These are elective courses, not required courses, 
for people that are interested in perhaps getting a better handle on their finances and building wealth over a period of time. Uh, I am an accredited investor. I've been an investor since I graduated high school uh, many, many years ago in 1980. I probably shouldn't self-disclose that, but I just did. So I'm 58 years old. Um, but I love and I'm passionate about uh, teaching uh, investments and personal finance here at FMCC. So uh, last point that I'll make before I turn this over to my very able uh, uh, colleague and close friend, Mark Swain, is that accounting is the language of business. And you need to study it no matter which college you go to because every business uses it. Most people that study accounting, particularly at the community college level, probably won't become CPAs, but it will help you in every uh, facet of your life and your career. And I'll conclude with the number one reason why I think you should uh, take your studies of business and accounting seriously, and that's money. All right? I believe that money is a very, very important driver in your career choice. And if you go to the Department of um, Labor Statistics, it's B as in Barry, BLS.gov. They list, and it's easy to find because, of course, accounting and auditing starts with an A. Uh, they list the uh, ed entry level educational requirements for becoming an accountant. You don't have to be a CPA to be an accountant. And that's a bachelor's degree. Again, for the CPA, it's generally a master's degree. And the median pay which means half the people make above that number and half the people make below that number in 2019 is $71,550. And I'll also tell you just from personal experience that when you're driving uh, on a road and you see a, a CPA firm, uh, a CPA with about five years worth of experience that's working for himself or herself will typically be making somewhere between $80,000 on the low end and about $280,000 on the high end. So it's a lucrative profession and everybody works. Uh, I was employed by PricewaterhouseCoopers during the great real estate crash uh, in the late 1980s. We had 1,200 CPAs working for our firm. Everybody on Wall Street was laying off. We lost two people. So you will always work. It's a secure career and it's lucrative. And uh, I encourage you to, uh, to come and uh, enjoy FMCC where you know, the teachers are gonna take good care of you. All right, I think I've overstepped my time as I usually do. Sorry about that to my colleagues. Let me turn this over to uh, one of our favorite professors, uh, Professor Mark Swain. Thank you, Professor Z. I appreciate that. Um, welcome everybody. Thanks for listening in. Um, I started my career actually in accounting and auditing. So I will talk a little bit about that in a minute. My background, um, I started off my first 25 years of life uh, in England and my career started off in London. I'm a first generation college student. So I got my bachelor's degree and I was the first one in my family of my siblings and my parents and my grandparents to get a degree. So I understand some of the struggles that go along with that. Um, I then came over to um, the US and moved into Schenectady, uh, New York. And I worked for GE Corporate out of Connecticut as a lead financial analyst. They paid for my MBA uh, in finance and IT systems. And I recently just got my doctorate in educational leadership. Um, I've had a variety of careers. So why would I tell you about my careers? Because uh, I believe it's important that when you come to FM and you look across the faculty, that sometimes you have no idea what your degree is going to get you. But the careers that these professors have and that we've had together can sometimes be inspiring. So I'll just list a few, but when you take classes, you'll learn more about these different careers. I've been an accountant, I've been an auditor, a financial analyst. I'm also a Six Sigma certified through GE's training program, and I've done process improvement analysis. I've been a director of finance and administration. Uh, believe it or not, I've been a high school business teacher for many years, and now I'm lucky enough to be at uh, this institution as a faculty member. Um, so, you know, this may be a good reason for you to come. Um, another good reason is accounting is a highly uh, desired career, as Professor Z just said. I teach in a class called Advanced Bookkeeping, and it's a nice, small, personable class. And by the time the students are finished with that class, they're ready to go into the workforce with that applied science degree. Um, and I can tell you that everybody who leaves that course, they either go to a four-year institution or they get a career typically locally with the students we've had so far 
Um, and, and I offer a letter of recommendation. I know many other professors will do that because we know the names of our students. We know the skill sets and we've worked in the industry. So when I expect someone to do a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet or an analysis of a company or some financial statements, I know what I'm looking for. And I use those same skills to give to my students. So when I give a recommendation for an accounting firm or a local business, um, I feel comfortable that they've represented the FM brand and our instruction and our teaching. As Professor Z just said, you know, you leave bookkeeping and accounting and you can make, you know, 60, 70, $80,000 a year. Now that is with your four year degree. Not everybody wants to get a four year degree, but you can work your way up in an organization. And trust me, I'm, my other professors will say the same thing. When we meet with local companies, they want people who have the ability to learn. And that's one thing that we do at FM is we teach people how to take their knowledge and take it to the next step. So locally, for bookkeeping and accounting, you can make between forty and fifty thousand dollars a year, even starting off with tax preparing, accounts receivable, which is collecting money, accounts payable, which is helping companies pay their bills, and that can get you your foot in the door. And trust me, once they see how good you are, they're going to want to keep you. This is a really um, great place to start your career. So that kind of ends the accounting um, cycle that we just talked about. So I'd like to move in, um, unless anybody has questions, I'd like to move into marketing and entrepreneurship. And I'm gonna kind of sow the seeds and then I'm gonna take you back to Professor Henderson because she has a lot of expertise in both those areas. Was that a question from somebody? <laughs> no, I think you guys are, are doing a great job at uh, going over the programs and not a better way to segue into marketing with how well each and every one of you are, are marketing. I will just mention someone just did uh, ask a question about the type of support. And I think this is a good time to bring it up because as each and every one of you are bringing up your skill set, it's important to know that at our small campus, uh, you guys are their support network. Yes, they'll have their advisors. Yes, they'll have other uh, professors on our campus but as they're going through the business program they have all of you to help and support them get them to their ultimate goal and I think that is what makes FM unmatched by by any other campus and and I think um, Alex will probably reinforce that here <laughs> absolutely so um, that's a good point and as we just move off of accounting I'm in the middle of writing recommendations for our students right now who have just graduated from the advanced bookkeeping uh, Professor Z's QuickBooks tax classes to going into the into the job field and giving them the recommendations because we know all our students' names. By the time you finish that first semester, we'll, we put a name to a face. They know us, we know them, and we share our information. So I'm glad somebody asked that question because that's what makes us stand out from other colleges. Um, so in marketing, like I teach marketing, Professor Henderson has done a great job in leading the marketing uh, effort and it's a great uh, great course. We have multiple courses in the marketing program. Students can really get prepared to build a marketing plan, analyzing the marketing plan of a large corporation. And it really can prepare the student for the four year. Some students really want to transfer into a four year degree. And there is a level of academic writing and expectations, which uh, both myself and Professor Henderson really help students with getting ready for that next level um, in a four-year institution. We also teach integrated marketing communications and e-commerce, help students develop um, maybe their business or look at how a business could be uh, used online, social media, uh, and the e-commerce platforms. Um, when we bring our businesses in, we have these processes of talking to local businesses and large corporations. And they all say the main three things is they want somebody with customer relationship skills, they want somebody with the ability to talk and sell and somebody to have like to be a self starter. Um, so we kind of teach a lot of these skills that the industry is looking for. Um, and to integrate within that, we usually bring in Microsoft Excel because um, within marketing and accounting, the big jobs that are out there are like marketing analytics, marketing research, taking data. So we cover that in our marketing program. Um, jobs such as like sales representatives, advertising, financial services, according to the BLS study that Professor Zuckerman just mentioned, they're making anywhere from around 66,000. A marketing specialist, marketing research is around 72,000. 
Um, and some of these jobs, you know, you would require the four year degree, but once again, there is no reason why you can't start off as a sales clerk, rep, um, marketing representative, and start off a little bit lower than that, but then work your way up and show your value. In a minute, I'll let Professor Henderson talk a bit more about marketing, but I want to talk a little bit about entrepreneurship because many of you may not realize this now, but you might want to set up your own business. So that is entrepreneurship. We take students to business plan competitions if they have any ideas. Um, we've helped students start businesses. We've even had a student uh, recently who came back in um, and has his own art business, and we've helped him understand how to do accounting. His product itself was brilliant. This, this artist had fantastic product, it was unique, but he needed to know, um, like, how do I do my accounting? How do I use QuickBooks? On the other side of things, when I meet most entrepreneurs, they don't typically price their products correctly. So we have managerial and cost accounting where we can help um, the entrepreneur, the student, understand how to price that product because cheap is not always good, right? You don't always associate quality with a cheaper product. So that's, we've helped um, existing businesses and new business owners go through this process. So um, obviously I could talk a lot about all this and um, I'm gonna pass you over right now to um, Professor Henderson who can probably add a little bit more to the marketing management and entrepreneurship programs here at FM. I look forward to seeing you all in the near future. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Swain. Um, I don't have, a tr I have some to add, um, but as far as the marketing program goes, um, there is the customer service skills and, and there are the marketing classes, which includes a uh, e-commerce and integrated marketing communications course, um, which is actually taught by Dr. Swain. And, and that really brings, when you put all of those things together, um, it really allows you to, to effectively understand um, what is needed to be successful in a marketing department or in a job doing marketing. The other thing about all of our, about business programs that sounds a bit like a cliche or, um, or, you know, almost overselling on my part, but realize that everything is a business. So if you're having a hard time trying to decide what kind of degree you want, you, you're, gonna, you're on your path and everybody has a path and you're gonna go down your path. But all along the way, they're gonna be businesses. Your own personal life is a business. You have to be able to manage your own money. You have to market yourself when you go on a job interview or um, once even you have a job or when you're talking to people, you have to be able to do your own self-management. So if you're undecided, a business degree is never gonna hurt you. It can't hurt you. Even if, even if you change and decide, I want to work in healthcare. Healthcares are still businesses. I had a, a woman years ago, a returning adult student, who came back and said, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this degree. I said, well, then why are you doing it? And she said, well, because, you know, I started it and I think I should finish, but I really want to go and, and work in my church and support my church. And I said, a church is a business. Money still comes in and money still goes out. So even if you're undecided, the, the, the lessons learned in a business degree are vast and wide, and it leads, lots of, leads to lots of options as you go down your path. Our particular path, um, in addition to the marketing program we've been talking about, we do teach management, and then we have a capstone course in both our management degree and our marketing degree that is an entrepreneurship course. And here students write, um, a business plan for a business of their choice. And we just had about 22 students complete this course, and there was a wide range of different types of businesses. And the reason this course is a capstone course is because employers told us that they wanted students to graduate and understand how all the pieces fit together. So they wanted students who could understand marketing and could understand the accounting and could understand management, but then how do all those fit together? And a marketing plan and a business plan is a great way to, to learn that. Over the years, I've had students, um, I've had veterans who actually um, are going to come back and we have a great support system for our veterans at the college. They have their own advisor, they have their own study area. Um, they're very well taken care of here at, at FM. And, and sometimes they come back and the, 
they have veteran loans that will allow them to start their own business. And so they'll actually do a business plan so that they can go on and do that. Um, we've also had veterans that end up transferring and, and going on and getting a four year degree and they, um, they're wildly successful. They always tell me, yes, FM prepared me because I always follow up with that to make sure that students can be successful. Sometimes students just do something that they think would be fun. Uh, maybe it's a cosmetic company. Uh, maybe it's a personal fitness gym. I had a few of those this year. Uh, the restaurant is always on the list, but students can be a little nervous about that because I'm a trained chef. I have a degree from the Culinary Institute of America. See, not a straight path. I started somewhere else and, and ended up here as a business professor with an MBA. Um, but that, so that's always, they want to do a restaurant because they like restaurants, but they know I'm going to critique it um, and know how to do that because of my background. So, um, but these, these business plans really help students um, by the time they leave, they really understand how everything they've learned fits together and, and how to apply what they've learned um, through, through developing the business plan. And so the marketing courses, the management courses, we also, Mrs. Dibus teaches human resource management. Um, so these programs that we have, and, and I'm always happy to talk more in detail about specific courses as an academic advisor um, and sort of career paths and transfer, but they're, they're very well-rounded and they give you the skills that you need to be successful, whether it's in your own life um, or in, in working for somebody else or a combination of both. And so, um, you know, I always, again, a business degree is, it, it can never hurt you even if you go somewhere, um, even if your path takes you to being an artist as, as Dr. Swain pointed out. And so with that, um, I am going to hand it off to Mrs. Divis to talk about some other programs, maybe some of the business courses she teaches. She'll teach you how to write that business communications <laughs> class. So she does a great job. And so for you, off to you, Mrs. Divis. Thank you, Alex. Um, I just want to say, like my, like my colleagues, I did not start my career as a, as a teacher. I came from banking, uh, where I was a vice president of a small community bank, and then, um, and then ended up here in at education, which I absolutely love. One thing that I do have different from my colleagues is that I started my education here at FM. I'm a former FM graduate. I did get my two-year degree here at FM and then went to Auntie Skidmore College and then finally got my master's at Russell Sage. But today I'm here to talk to you about our administrative assistant program, our AAS degree. I Spending all those years in business um, I prior to coming to education, I can assure you that most people have work, who have worked in business will tell you that the administration is the uh, administration assistant is the heart of any organization. At FMCC, we have a program that allows you to provide you know you with all the skills that you'll need to work in this challenging position. One thing about FM's program is it's technology intensive program. It, it really prepares you to work in a variety of business settings. You can work in a college or university, schools, a hospital, state and local governments, finance companies, banks, legal offices, you name it, there's this place for an administrative assistant. I also think that as you, um, as you can, see from the recent events of the COVID-19 pandemic, strong technology skills are and will continue to be so important for any career choice that you have. And this program allows you to hone those skills. And so no matter what your career choice is, you'll be ready to go out there into the workplace. You, um, you will obviously do a series of core classes that everybody will take, but then we let you go into an area of special, uh, a specialization path. And that path can be in business, obviously here in the business, it's part of the business program. It can also be healthcare or it could be digital technology, you decide. And as some of my, as some people I've mentioned already, um, this program provides you with an internship opportunity. You don't have to take an internship, but most of the people who do take an internship feel that they're very beneficial to them 
and I, honestly, some, a lot of our our students are hired by their by the company before they even graduate. So that's something to think about. Um, <clears throat> our business faculty also make sure that we're in contact regularly with all of our area industries to to make sure our we're keeping our classes the skills that you get here from our from us up to date so that when you do leave here you do leave fm you have the you have mastery of the skills that our our employers want um as our as some of my colleagues have mentioned i also was on the bls.gov website i highly recommend it to anybody who's researching careers it's a great site and um, so one of the things I wanted to share with you is the top paying states for administrative assistance and up in the top five, New York State is, is one of them. And then our, our neighbors, Connecticut and New Jersey are in the top five, along with uh, Washington DC and California. But one interesting fact that I uh, think that you should consider if you're considering this as your um, career choice one, uh, they predict, the BS, BLS government site predicts that the fastest growing area in, for administrative assistance is the healthcare industry. They, um, they predict that this is going to grow 23% by 2028. So, and that's much higher than all other professions. So it's something to think about. And I want to kind of, um, end with the fact that most most of you want to know so where where do the where do our graduates go and one of the places that our grad that some of the graduates from my program have gone um the state and state and local governments you'll see them working in our local hospitals banks legal offices and while others have decided to further their education and go take the business route and go and get a four-year degree in business. So, you know, there's nothing better than uh, having a lot of opportunities. So starting at FM is, is a great thing to do. I can speak from that from a personal perspective for all of you. But um, if you're looking for a challenging career that's the heart of an organization, um, we have it here for you at FMCC. Dan? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, well, thank you very much. And you kind of led into one of the first questions we got, got. But first, I want to thank all of you for giving an overview of uh, our business programs here on campus. And we did get a few questions, um, but that led into one of them, which is uh, what are some of our most popular transfer schools outside of uh, for leaving from the business program and going on into a four year? So I don't know if someone would like to take that question. I'll answer it just from the point of view of accountants. In our uh, regional area within 50 miles of FMCC, for people that are interested in becoming certified public accountants, the two most popular schools that I see and two that I recommend highly would be Siena College and the State University of uh, Albany. And I went to both schools. I got my accounting degree at Siena and my master's in tax at UAlbany. But SAGE has come up a lot. And uh, there are other SUNY schools that have really developed strong accounting and business programs, SUNY Plattsburgh and many others. But at least locally, Siena and Albany have very strong accounting programs. I'm going to defer to Professor Henderson and Swain and Divis for their respective answers. Um, should I, I'll jump in first and say, that we have a lot of students, um, the two schools that Larry, uh, that Professor Zuckerman mentioned, um, Siena and UAlbany, we have students that are not only for accounting but for business that go to both those schools. We've also seen a lot of students in recent years find a really good home at St. Rose locally. Um, that's been a really a nice choice. We also have quite a few students who transfer to SUNY Plattsburgh, uh, Sage is another college. SUNY Plattsburgh works out well. Sometimes students want to stay. Depends where they live. Sometimes they go to SUNY Cobleskill um, because sometimes they can commute there depending if they live on our, our western, sort of southwestern edge of our um, service area, if you will. Um, so there isn't, I don't have one school that stands out more than all the rest, but certainly um, on the private side, locally, 
um, St. Rose and, and Siena are, have been very popular in recent years. Also the O schools, Oswego and Oneana are two other schools that students seem to like to transfer to as well from our business programs. Um, I think, you know, a lot of times students come to FM and because we are a small school with small class sizes, we have, most of our classes aren't bigger than 25 and most of them are smaller than that. Um, students get used to that size class and that size learning environment and a little bit smaller school. So they have a tendency to transfer to some of those. Our international students, they often like to transfer to larger schools and so they go to um, often go to Binghamton from, from, um, from FM um, or down to New York City. So it, it also depends where the student has come from will depend upon where they want to transfer. But if you're, if you're a regional FM student, um, they often like to stay within New York. Um, though the great thing about SUNY is that it's really respected all the way across the country. So you can do a year or two um, at, a, at FM and transfer anywhere you want to go because there's SUNY credits and, and they, they, transfer, they transfer with ease. Um, I, I've been helping students transfer for about 16 years as part of my academic advising. And it's just not a thing that I run into that a lot of classes will not transfer regardless of where students want to go. So um, I'm not sure if Mark, uh, Dr. Swain, or Mrs. Divis has to wants to add to that, but that is probably a longer answer than you want. No, I think that's a, that's a great question. The only thing I would like to say is that I had all those colleges down, but we do keep in touch with several of our students, and it's nice to hear that the students feel like they feel very well prepared to go to those four-year schools, and they come back and say, "I'm so glad you taught me that." Like for me, I teach a lot of accounting. And they say, oh, I'm so glad you taught me that because it made me feel ready. I'm glad, you know, Professor Hendon told me that or Professor Zuckerman showed me that. So it does make me feel good that we are preparing students who want to transfer um, to those institutions. So thank you for that question. That was a great question. Yeah, Dan? no, very good. Yep, and we actually had two more questions. So if anybody else has questions via Zoom or Facebook Live, send them to us now and we'll We'll get through these two and we'll see if there's any more before we uh, wrap things up. But this one has to deal with uh, math nervousness, <laughs> which uh, I think every student has uh, felt at one time or another. But uh, he is wondering if math could be a roadblock uh, to his business degree if he struggles in it at high school. And anybody is welcome to take this. <laughs> I want Professor Dibus to answer this question because she and I developed a course together uh, to meet that very need, but I, I want her to answer it. Yes, we, we developed a course called the Quantitative Business Applications. And in that course, we help you through the, those, business those business math challenges. And I don't believe that it really will be a, a stumbling block for you. Not only because we will help you as your professors, we're, we're more than happy to help you with whatever you need. We do have a great support system of our math lab, which will help our students through, their, through the difficult math. We have peer tutors that help them. Um, so um, let nothing be your obstacle. Uh, we're here to help you. We want to help you. We have all kinds of uh, places for you to get help. I just encourage you to do one thing, ask for it as soon as you need it. Ask it for it sooner than later, and we'll, we'll direct you and we'll help you every step of the way. No, oh, perfect. So uh, the next question uh, is one student wants to know, uh, she knows she wants to be in the business field, uh, but she's unsure where in the business field she wants to be into. Um, I guess, uh, to answer this best would be, um, what do we do to help students who are unsure of the business field they might like to eventually get into when they start out at FM? Or even prior to getting to FM, what could they be doing? Um, I'll be answering that. Oh, okay, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, yeah. Professor Swain. Well, I'll start then, we can jump. We have a couple of introductory courses at FM in business and uh, Business 101, we call it uh, the introduction to business. Um, will help you explore different fields and different topics. So as you start to pick electives, as you go forward, believe it or not, I've had students and someone just asked the math question 
I hated math. I'm bad at math. Then they take an accounting class and they're like, I love accounting. So, you know, don't be afraid to explore these different things. Marketing is an option. Um, communications, selling, and all those different careers in business are explored early on in the first few semesters. Um, the other thing is to join clubs, talk, ask questions. And I think even just across the four of us right here, we have a wide variety of experiences to help guide um, each of our students. Because we, as I said before, we get to know all of our students and we get to know your, your strengths and your weaknesses. And we try and help build upon those and help guide you into a career or in a lot of cases off to the four year. And the other day I just spoke to a student who just finished his master's in accounting at St. Rose and now wants to do his doctorate. Right? Obviously that doesn't happen very often, but you never know where your career is going to end up. So Larry, did you want to add to that? Yeah, I did. I wanted to answer that question specifically because I think they said they wanted to know what they should do before even coming to FM and also why FM while they're at FM. Yeah. The answer is learn as much about business as you can. And one of the ways you do that is by reading things like the Wall Street Journal or the business section of the New York Times and also watching business television. My favorite station is CNBC. If you're a Spectrum customer, that's channel 48. But learning about the world of business, because you're going to find, and all four of us, I think, are common this way, we've all had multiple careers, every single one of us. Uh, I started as a stockbroker, then I went back to school and got a master's and became a CPA, and I went from auditing to taxation, and then I worked in technology and accounting technology, and I ended up starting my own firm, a dot-com, which was successful, and I retired from that early, and then I became a full-time teacher. At FM. So the only constant for many successful business people is change. So, you know, I don't know about uh, my colleagues, but I still haven't decided what I want to do when I grow up. I'd love to be a rock star. I know it's not going to happen for me, but uh, that's my dream. It always has been. But at least with accounting and business, you have the ability to move from field to field. And I don't know how many prospective students of FM know this, but about 50% of all attorneys leave the practice of law to do something else. And about a third of all CPAs, including me, leave the full-time practice of accounting to do something else, although I still have a tax practice in addition to uh, being a full-time teacher at FM. So flexibility and learning about all the different fields of business through reading, okay, popular business journals and watching business television is a really good advice for you before you get to FM. And I stress it during your uh, FM experience. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> hearing no other voices coming out, I think we've answered that question pretty good. And you're lucky, uh, Dr. Zuckerman, or uh, <laughs> Professor Zuckerman, uh, we almost did a uh, Disney sing-along with all of the professors. So now we might have to bring that back uh, in the near future through, uh, through Zoom. So you might get your rock star envy pretty soon. I but, think I uh, sound more like Alvin and the Chipmunks. <laughs> oh, that's good. So, I do want to thank all of you, our esteemed professors. The knowledge in this chat uh, is what makes our students successful and uh, really what uh, markets the college is when you get to actually meet the professors uh, that will teach you and train you for that future job is what really allows our campus uh, to show off why we are so special and uh, really a hidden gem within the SUNY system. If you'd like to speak with an admissions counselor like myself about these programs or others, or just your career goals, uh, feel free to sign up for a phone or virtual appointment uh, through our website. If we can't answer the questions directly, or if you want to contact one of these professors here, uh, we can get you into contact with them uh, as well so that you can get more information answered. And just a reminder that our FM application is always free. Uh, just go to fmcc.edu. Uh, and we can get you accepted to one of these business programs. Our FM chat uh, with professors uh, continues next week on May 18th at 4 p.m. And that will include professors within our general studies and education division. So please feel free to, uh, to join us for that. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to drop us a line. Thank you and have a great rest of your day.